kamate kamate kaura kaura. Kamate kamate kaura kaura. Tis death, tis death, tis life, tis life. There they stood, the brave 500 soldiers of Tuma Toenga, descendants from a long line of warriors thousands of years old, each and every one of them representing their ancestors on the field of battle. They sported scars and wounds over their rugged, worn, torn bodies, which were testaments to the endurance of the battles and conflicts they fought in. Gallipoli. What brought them to this place? This place of war, this place of horror, this place of death. The desire and the thirst for the most scarce thing in our world, peace, peace, peace. Their deep, terrifying voices echoed out into the night, a night so dark and filled with terrors, their feet shook the ground and sent ripples of cold-hearted fear in all directions. Tabletop Hill was deafened with the sounds of kamate kamate kaura kaura, and it was at that late hour that the Turkish soldiers defending their homeland would forever remember the war cry of the Māori contingent, later known as the Māori Pioneer Battalion. These brave men who held onto the traditions passed down by their forefathers before them, answered the call to war, not only to defend, but both able and willing to defend and protect the lives and rights of others. My great-great-grandfather, Albert Victor Whiteford, second lieutenant to the Māori Pioneer Battalion, born on the 22nd of January, 1895, my Kuroa would go to serve in one of the most destructive and gruesome wars this earth shall ever see. He served in the deserts of Egypt, 1915, where blood was buried beneath the sand. He fought on the hills of Gallipoli, 1915 to early 1916, walking through mud and guts. And he took cover in the trenches of the Western Front, 1916 to early 1919, as his comrades and friends fell all around him. He embarked from Wellington on the 14th of February, 1915, upon the SS Warimu to make his way to Egypt as a part of A Company, 1st Māori Contingent. At the latter end of March, he arrived with the contingent at Cairo, where Colonel Herbert took command of the Māori soldiers. General Maxwell reviewed the contingent, and to honour him, the men received him in full Māori style and custom. Shortly after the review, the men of the contingent were sent off to Malta, to take up garrison duty on the small island nation. Meanwhile, at home, pleas were made for the Māori men to be given the full recognition, acknowledgement, and lawful rights of a normal New Zealand soldier. Whilst in Malta, the New Zealand government had finally accepted, and as a result of this, the governor of Malta attended the mass parade of the troops. He informed the Māori men, who were prepared to give up their lives, that they would take part in the fighting. He asked them, those in favor of the resolution stand fast. Those who desire to take up garrison duty need only slope their arms. No arms were sloped that day. Not yet satisfied, he asked them to say yes or no. And at that day, the island of Malta had witnessed and heard one of the loudest roars of yes that the island shall ever hear the echoes of which disappeared into the heavens. His feet touched the soil of Anzac Cove on July 2nd, 1915, as dawn occupied that part of the world. Thus, the Māori soldiers came to shore for the first time to fight for justice and a more peaceful civilization. On August the 5th, he would fight his first battle. As the Māori advance began, the entire contingent raised their voices to the ancient war cry of Kamate, the echoes of which died away within the distance of the rattling toils of machine gun and rifle fire. This helped to a very great extent in ousting the Turkish soldiers from several key positions. It is said that when the Turkish soldiers heard the haka, 
they believed that Satan had opened the gates of hell and that their day was at an end. My great-great-grandfather and his fellow Māori went on to achieve the victory the world so desired for God, for King, for the Empire, for New Zealand, and for the Māori nation. They did not seek glory. They sought to rid the world of war and let peace reign over the land. We are born into this world of chaos to forge a pathway where our legacy may flourish. What happened to the legacy of the Māori contingent? It was left in the scorching desert plains of Egypt. It was left on the steep, sharp hills of Gallipoli. And it was left deep in the muddy trenches of the Western Front. And their legacy departed this world with the passing of the last surviving veterans. We remember them on Anzac Day. We remember them through the cenotaphs and monuments. My fondest wish is for their legacy not to not only be carried on by their descendants, but through men much like them. The Māori nation must reclaim its pride. Therefore, I put out the challenge for the legacy of our brave fallen heroes to carry on, for their deeds, their stories, their courage, and their honor to carry on. The Māori Pioneer Battalion should be reformed to instill pride into the Māori people and into New Zealand once more. Let us not let their fight be in vain. Let us take their honor and pass it to a new generation of Māori soldiers Although they were looked down upon at first, they rose above all else. Therefore, in the name of the Māori contingent, in the name of the New Zealand Māori Pioneer Battalion, and in the name of my great-great-grandfather, Albert Victor Wakeford, I challenge you to let their legacy live on as it should. Let the legacy of the brave 500 warriors of Tumatoenga, the angry-eyed war god, be remembered in the many generations to come. This shall be their final crowning victory.